My wife and I were married for four and a half years. The first time my wife and I met was at a football stadium. I had gone out with a couple of friends to support my football team. And she was there with her family too. While the game was going on, she tried to take a picture. And since I was sitting a row from where she sat, she captured me in the image and without caring if I was intruding or not. I smiled as she took the shots. Well, I'll state, we became friends afterward because she was so lovely and polite. And after she saw me grinning from ear to ear in the pictures, she asked if she could send the pictures to me. It was hilarious because I thought she would be mad that I ruined her moments. Instead, we became friends. From there, we exchanged contacts and followed each other on Facebook. After the day we met, we didn't talk for a while. We started talking again after she sent a message on Facebook, and from there, we started talking. It started as random questions. And gradually, we moved to personal questions, I liked her personality. She was energetic and always fun to talk on the phone or chat with. So after weeks of talking and getting to know ourselves, I asked Ram on a date, and she accepted. Our first date was so smooth, and it even lent to other dates, subsequently leading to a relationship. I had fallen in love with her, and she made me feel like a baby again. I was heartbroken in my previous relationship and was too afraid to fall in love again. Which was more reason I buried myself in work and tried to shut out any woman that came my way, but with my ex-wife, it was different. She made me feel safe and assured, and I loved her so much. My mind was at rest with her, and eventually we got married. My wife had always wanted a child, so we had one child in the first year of our marriage. She was already two months pregnant before we got married. And although I didn't want a child so fast, I agreed for us to have a child because of how excited she was. When our daughter came, I was so happy and as much as I wasn't fond of babies or children. I loved how she lit up and how her presence pushed me to work harder and become a better father and husband. As my daughter grew older, she spent more time with me because I worked from home and had enough time to to take her to her daycare and bring her back home. My wife was a nurse so the only time she got to spend time with our daughter was either on her days off or, or when she was at home. Also, because I was the one who spent most of the time at home, I took care of the house, cleaned, did the laundry, and on some days, I would cook. I did this because I wanted to ease the burden on my wife and loved a neat house. I also knew she was always exhausted every time she came home and the possibility of her cleaning the house, going grocery shopping, and cooking with the little time she had to rest was almost impossible, so I did all I could to make life easier for us. We continued like this for the first three years of our marriage, and were both happy. We barely had issues except for our normal couple fights, which never lasted a day. We were also great parents to her daughter and did everything possible to raise her well. Everything was great between us until the fourth year of our marriage. It all started with my wife not returning when she was supposed to. For example, if she worked the afternoon shift and was supposed to come home in the evening to be with us, she would not return until the following day and would claim she was covering up for a sick colleague or she decided to work overtime. In the beginning, I understood her reasons, but it got to a level one could not take it anymore. It was becoming more of a habit than an excuse, and it affected our relationship. Our daughter was beginning to miss her mother. And each time, I had to devise a dozen excuses for why her mother did not come home. Also, when all of this started, our intimacy reduced terribly. She no longer allowed me to touch her, and each time I tried to, she would either complain about being so tired or, or say she was not in the mood. These continued for weeks and it even rolled into months. It got so bad that I became afraid for our marriage, and I signed us up for marriage counseling, but she didn't attend the appointment once. As time passed, our relationship deteriorated, and I had to open up to a close friend. He first suggested that my wife was either seeing someone or was tired of our marriage and none of that made sense. I trusted my wife so much and it never crossed my mind that she would cheat on me to even show how much I, I trusted her. I argue with my friend that my wife couldn't cheat, and I believed she was only working so hard so we, we could give our daughter the kind of future she deserved. 
I also thought about the aspect of my wife being tired of our marriage, and I tried to talk to her about it, but every time I brought it up, her response would either be cold or she would sound so uninterested in the conversation. After trying so many times to make things right, the idea of my wife seeing someone else crossed my mind. Already in the previous month, there were many changes with her. Before she used to go grocery shopping, wearing simple clothes, but she became more conscious of how she looked and would even combine two to three perfumes just to go grocery shopping. I didn't think it was suspicious because I had always complained about how she dressed outside the house and the rest. She used to look homeless before, which was a major improvement on her end. It was something I complained about all the time. And I was glad she was finally listening. So one day, my wife was playing with our daughter in the living room, and I was in the kitchen trying to make dinner for us. I remember her phone ringing, and instead of taking the call in the living room, like I expected her to, she rushed out of the house, and immediately I knew something was wrong. In our two years of dating and four plus years of marriage, my wife had never gone outside to take a call, no matter what the call was about. Out of curiosity, I left what I was doing and followed her. I didn't go out of the house, but I could hear most of her conversation because she left the door open and before she returned, I hurried back to the kitchen. After she came back inside the house, she acted all cool played with our daughter for a few minutes, and then turned to me to ask about the groceries we needed to replace. I mentioned the things and she made the list, after she was done, she told me she'd be going to get them at the the grocery store since she wasn't doing anything at the moment. I didn't need a psychic to tell me something was off. Her body language said it all, and I watched her go into our room to shower, change, and wear light makeup for grocery shopping. We had not shared our husband and wife bond or even communicated like we used to in months, but there she was, excited and all dressed for grocery shopping. As soon as she left, I asked my closest neighbor if his oldest daughter could help me watch after our daughter for a few minutes, and he agreed. It was such a relief and without wasting time, I drove to the grocery store I knew she went to. On getting to the grocery store, I waited a bit, and just as I was about to step out of my car to confirm if she was genuinely shopping, I saw my wife walking out with a man from the grocery store. She had her hand around his waist, and his hands were crossed over her shoulder. It was already evening, and the whole store was lit up. I actually saw them from the sea through glass. And before they stepped out of the store, I already charged inside in anger. I was boiling and to date, I could not believe I had acted that way. My wife was so shocked to see me that she did not know what to do or say. I didn't confront or talk to her because deep down, I knew we were done. Instead, I focused on her affair partner yelled at him and ensured I caused a scene. People gathered around to take videos and photographs, but I didn't mind. I was just so angry. In the end, his manager found out about his affair with my wife and he was fired. As for my wife, she came home that night to beg and cry. But no matter what she said, I was too disappointed to forgive her. She said she did it because she thought she would get away with it and return to me which even hurt me more. That same night, I kicked her out of the house and she crashed at her friend's place. She had been seeing him for more than six months, and I was completely unaware. That whole time, she was telling stories of how she covered for her friend at work. And blah blah, she was spending the night with him while I looked after our daughter alone. There's no need to ask if we divorced or not because we did. I could not just forgive her or forget she cheated on me while I was trying to be a good husband and father. Thankfully, I won custody of our daughter, mainly because she was never around in the first place, so it was better she stayed with me. It's been over a year, and I still have not gotten over the pain and hurt I felt. I was so disappointed and I still am. Right now, my daughter is my top priority and I will try my best to be a good father and teach her to be faithful to whoever she ends up with. Up, there are different levels to why women cheat each with its own shockwave. I'm sorry you had to go through this, but you do not have to sulk forever. She should be sulking because it's her loss and not yours. I'm glad you want custody of your daughter, and I know you will be a great dad.
You need to let go of the past and move on, but you must open up your heart first. I understand it can take time to heal, though, so take all the time you need until you are ready again. I wish you all the best. Now let's get into the next story of the day. I was married to my wife for just a year when I found out about her affair. Before Sarah and I married, we were family friends, and our families knew one another. In fact, her mom was a very close friend of my mom, and somehow their relationship continued with us, their children. As a teenager, I had been crushing on Sarah for a while, but after she married her previous husband, what I had for her died down, and I moved on with my life. Unfortunately, two years after she was married, she divorced her husband because of his infidelity, and that's when we became close friends. Throughout the time she was dealing with her divorce, I was there to stand by and support her. And in the process, we fell in love with each other. And I asked her to be my girlfriend. According to her, she said I was nothing like her ex-husband, and she wished she had met me before she got married to him. Sincerely, I loved Sarah so much. And shortly after she was done with her divorce, I asked her to move in with me being that I had known her for years and wanted us to live together. As of the time, Sarah and I started dating, I was not in any relationship, and I wanted to settle down too. I was tired of being alone. And as soon as I asked her to move in with me, she did. We didn't date for so long. We dated for nine months. And after nine months of waking up next to her every day, I believed it was time to make things official. We had a small wedding, invited friends and family, and everything was great. Marrying Sarah was like a dream come true, and I treated her with so much love. On her end, Sarah cared for me, cleaned the house, and did all the necessary chores. She was so sweet, and I loved coming home from work to be with her. Even after remarried, we continued with our bi-monthly family gathering, where our parents and available siblings would come together at my parents' or her parents' house. And we would all eat together like a family. Life was great for us, and we barely had any issues, except when I forgot to take out the trash. After Sarah divorced her ex-husband, she told me she was no longer in contact with him, especially since they ended things on bad terms, and I believed her. I hadn't seen how much she had been hurt by him, and I knew it was difficult for her to leave someone she had dated for four years and were married for three years. And that's why I tried as much as possible to comfort her and encourage her during that time. We didn't have a child or thought about having one because Sarah didn't want children, and she preferred we either got a dog or bird whenever she was ready to become a parent. And I was cool with that. I didn't like kids anyways, and I was cool with us only a pet sometime in the future. Even our parents tried to convince us by telling us all the beautiful things about having kids and why children were important, but we still did not let them get to us. Now that I write this, I'm grateful I didn't let my parents convince me because I'd probably be raising another man's child. So it all happened that one day Sarah and I were in the living room, watching a movie together on a Friday night, like we always did, and then I realized I could not find my phone. Not like it was missing. I had this bad habit of dropping my phone in a place I would forget. At first, I searched the couch in the whole living room, but I could not find it, and she didn't bother helping me find it because it wasn't the first or second time it was happening that week. The worst part was that I loved to leave my phone on silent. So even if I called the number, I'd need to go from room to kitchen to bathroom to hear the vibration. After searching for a couple of minutes and I was already frustrated, I asked for Sarah's phone so I could go around the house and listen for the vibration and she gave it to me. It was a big distraction from the movie we were watching. And since it was a series we were anticipating, she was so engrossed that she didn't even notice when I left. I checked the kitchen, the laundry room. I did laundry just before we watched the movie, the bedroom, and eventually, I found my phone in the bathroom. I left it there after I used the toilet. I was a bit relieved because I had a work meeting in less than 10 minutes, and just as I was about to leave our bedroom, a WhatsApp group chat notification popped on her screen. There was something weird with the group chat name and all the sensual emojis attached to it. Out of curiosity, I opened the group chat to read the message. 
And at first glance, I knew what was going on but I was wondering what my wife was doing in a group like that. It wasn't until I read the messages that I realized that my wife had secretly been having an affair behind my back. And the most heartbreaking part was that she was cheating on me with her ex-husband and his girlfriend. They said all sorts of nasty things to one another in the group. And from all I gathered, they had been having threesomes, they even had one that week, and they were already making plans for the next and all the toys they wanted to use to spice things up. Honestly, I stood in shock for almost a minute and tried to wrap my head around what I had just seen. It was shocking to think that we both talked about her ex-husband that same day and she cussed at him and wished him all the miserable things in the world. I knew I would have to read their messages over and over to be sure I wasn't making things up in my head. So I took screenshots of the messages I saw, took screenshots of her ex-husband and his lover's picture in, in case she tried to deny it. And I sent them to my number in WhatsApp. Then I marked her message as unread, and I cleared every trace. I could not even confront her because it was a lot to take in that night, and I couldn't sleep the whole night. My head nearly popped open. The following morning, she noticed I was a bit dull and cold toward her, but she believed I would cheer up once we met our family. We were gathering at her parents' house on second Saturday of the month. When we got to her parents' house, I tried not to ruin the happy and waited until it was time for lunch. While we were eating, I asked her if she had seen her ex-husband recently, and the question surprised everyone. She answered with a smile and denied not seeing him since their divorce. My hands were already shaking at that point, and her parents noticed it. I couldn't control my anger anymore and yelled at her to explain the screenshots I saw on her phone. When she got my phone and read the messages, her mouth dropped, and she began to cry immediately. At the same time, I sent all the screenshots to our joint family group chat, and everyone was shocked. I wasn't the only one that was so disappointed. Her parents were so ashamed and disappointed that they yelled at her to explain what I was talking about, and she, she did nothing but cry. After I exposed her in front of her parents and my, my parents, I walked out of the house and she tried to follow me. I left her there, and she did not return home that evening. The following day, I packed all of her stuff and drove it to her parents' house, and I left. She arrived at my house the following week and begged me to forgive her. She even created a small scene as I entered my car, and drove out and didn't care. Eventually, we divorced, and she has been miserable since then. Also, her infidelity affected the relationship between family somehow, and my mom is no longer close to her mother like they used to be. It's been four years, and I'm glad I didn't let her infidelity hold me back. I'm currently in a relationship with the woman I intend to marry, but we are taking things slow. As for Sarah, she found out her ex-husband only using her for pleasure and he didn't even marry his girlfriend. He dumped them both, and since then, she has not been in any relationship. Up. Women can be so deceptive at times to even think she made you think she hated her ex-husband when she be cheating on you. Be glad you learned the truth early, and I'm so happy you have found a better woman who will love and cherish you. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Take care. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, 